Hello YouTube, I want to talk to you today about the realness of sorcery. I, I wrote about this on my blog, so I hope you don't mind. I figured it was worth making a video about as well. So if you read my books, you, you, you're on this channel, chances are you think magic, witchcraft, sorcery is real. My students obviously all think magic, witchcraft, and sorcery are real. But here's the thing. People act all the time as if it's not. Or at least if it is real, then it acts like no other real thing in life. This is a mistake. So this video is about getting real with your magic. The first thing to know is that sorcery doesn't happen in a vacuum. It's a real thing. Therefore, its influence competes with other real things. You can be sure that your love spell is hard at work, but so is your physical appearance, social skills, sense of humor, confidence, agreeability, dozen other factors. Pick a number, let's say eight. Your love spell has an influence of eight. Okay, what about the other factors? Maybe your face is a seven. Congratulations. Mine isn't, but yours is. That's good. Unfortunately, your hygiene is a negative four, you smelly bastard. Your confidence is a five, but your narcissistic tendency to make every conversation about yourself is a negative eight. You get the idea? Sorcery is real and thus competes in the world of real things. Real influences working against you or for you. The ones that are working against you are making you fight an uphill battle. Some of you put so much effort into magic that you don't have any room or time to put effort into anything else. So in other words, you want your magic to affect love, money, health, etc. but you put no other effort other than the magic. You're living in a way that the most powerful and perfectly executed magic is needed just to get you to the baseline that other people start at. So magic is real, competes with other real things. This also speaks to the idea of magic not working. So I want to be clear. Failing to achieve a goal is not the same as not working, right? If we do magic to get something and we don't get what we want, it doesn't mean that the magic isn't real. It just means it wasn't up to the task, right? Sorcery is real and thus it can succeed or fail for entirely mechanical reasons. Magic failing to achieve his goal is not the same as magic not working. Doctors treat patients with medicine that is real all the time. And those patients sometimes don't get better because it wasn't up to the task. Same thing with lawyers, salespeople, Olympic athletes. Their efforts are real, their techniques are real, but sometimes they're not up to the task. Yet when a ritual or spell fails, I rarely see people consider this. It's either it didn't work, ergo the magic isn't real, or some other excuse. In fact, there's all kinds of great excuses. So some people will take any excuse to say, oh, well, magic isn't real. This is all BS, right? So if the spell doesn't get what you hope for, it's proof that none of this is real. But it's not. You know, if I, if I take my car jack and I try to jack up the Empire State Building, my car jack's going to break doesn't mean that the jack isn't real. It doesn't mean that the effort put in isn't real. If I jump up and down to try to knock the earth out of orbit, it doesn't mean that I'm not real or the jumping's not real or even the impact and effect on the earth is not real. It just means it's not enough to do anything, right? So that's what people often don't consider. On the other hand, there's all kinds of woo-woo explanations that people resort to, right? Because they so desperately want it to be real that they don't even want to question failure. They don't want to accept it at all. 
So rather than just say, eh, it didn't work, they come up with all kinds of crazy excuses. The gods did not will it to be so. Okay, well, if everything that happens is what the gods will or what God wills, why are we doing magic? Why are we doing sorcery at all, right? Your higher self protected you from yourself. Uh, really? Where was the higher self when I put money into FTX last year or, or you know, dated that psycho back in college, right? Um, your manifest, your magic will manifest in time. Okay, but the mortgage is due at the first of the month. So, you know, if it manifests three years from now, not really helpful. My all-time favorite, though, that I have heard from people more than a few times is, your magic manifested on the astral plane. Who cares? So, if you let go of the reflexive denials of magic, and you let go of the woo-woo excuses, you're left with magic being a real thing. And the beauty of this is, if it's a real thing, whose influence is real and it just wasn't up to the task, you can look at how could this have gone better? What could I have done differently? Perhaps I could have tried a different approach. Perhaps I should just walk away from this entirely and just accept what it is. So all of this, is because magic is real. Also, magic is real. There is no need for magical ethics. It's a real thing. It can be used for good or for ill or anything in between. And most everything is in between, right? This is where sorcery operates. There is no need for magical ethics. The ethics you use to navigate the rest of your life will do just fine. This means if you would use physical violence against someone, then using a curse is probably on the table as well. If you wouldn't ever consider hitting someone to get what you want, then cursing them should be off the table as well. Uh, most situations, of course, are not as cut and dry as, as curses. So causing no harm simply doesn't fit reality. If you do a spell to get the VP slot at your company, this doesn't just affect you, it affects other people who are harmed by not getting that slot. So does this make all magic unethical, right? I don't think so. Not any more than being conventionally attractive is unethical or going to an impressive school or having good connections or any other kind of privilege that one might go into a situation with. Right? So if you do a spell that specifies that your magic not harm anyone, you might just be enchanting your way out of the job rather than into it. That said, don't, you know, in my opinion, you don't want to achieve things by any means necessary, unless, of course, you're a sociopath. But the point is, you don't need a separate set of ethics, right? It's true that if you do things with magic, you won't necessarily, uh, you know, because people don't believe in magic and there's no laws of the state governing magic. Yeah, you won't get charged with assault or something. However, if your ethics are, well, I would harm this person, except I would get caught, then that's not really ethics. That's just consequences. And again, you don't need a separate set of considering the consequences because magic is a real thing. The last thing I want to say is that there is no such thing as absolute security, safety, or absolute sorcery. Uh, I remember a while ago I was talking to a friend and they were clearly suffering from a curse, right? I, I <laughs> There's a lot of people who think that they're suffering from curses that really aren't, but there are sometimes people that really are suffering from curses or cross conditions and they refuse to believe it, even though they believe in magic. Uh, not only in this case, not only did they have all the constellation of symptoms that you might expect, but there was literally a person with motivation and ability that more or less admitted in a roundabout way to 
performing the curse. Yet this friend believed it was absolutely impossible because they banish. I banish daily. Nothing can get through to me. I have a talisman. Nothing can get through to me, right? Bull! Because magic is real and real things aren't like this. Uh, policy advisor Dan Caldwell once said, there is no such thing as absolute security. It is a matter of degree. This is how real things work. If you, if you drive a car, you get into a car with airbags, you put on your seatbelt, you drive defensively in order to protect yourself and your passengers from driving, you do everything you can, but guess what? You can still get into an accident. You can still die in that accident. You can become a black belt in jujitsu and still get the crap beat out of you by somebody who's just better at you. You can have all the security of a full military installation and still get wiped off the face of the earth. That's what reality is. And magic and sorcery are real. So does this mean we shouldn't bother with protection magic? Of course not. Because real things are about mitigating harm. It's a matter of degrees, right? So you prevent the dangers you can, to mitigate the damage that you can't prevent, and you recover and rebuild from whatever you survive, right? It also means that you don't need to max out protection. Some people think that they should, should just have maximum protection all the time. But again, also no. We need to recognize that whether it's spirits or people, most of them are not out to get us all the time. Most beings don't really care about us one way or the other. And security comes with a price. Endless banishings cut you off from the very spirits that you probably want to be contacting and learning from if you're interested in magic and in sorcery. So when we let go of this fantasy that sorcery can keep us perfectly and absolutely safe, or the delusion that spirits will take any opportunity to hurt us if, they, if we're not banished to hell, we can start to evaluate our real needs and the methods that we need to establishment. This is how real things work, and sorcery is real. So go forward into your week and think about if sorcery is real, how would it behave in a mechanical way, in a real way? All right, that's it for this week. I will talk to you soon. Thanks again, YouTube.